Hi, my name is Mikko Suvanta and this is the Mosomic MEMS Microphone Guide. This episode continues on the subject of MEMS Microphone Reliability. In this one I talk about the reliability hazards MEMS microphones face. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. Okay, so what are the hazards that put the reliability and robustness of MEMS microphones to test? First of all, there are the environmental factors. Temperature can affect a microphone, its characteristics and its long-term reliability. Both the semiconductor chips and the microphone package can be affected. Temperature can vary due to the weather, indoor heating systems, air conditioning and so on. A microphone may also be heated by the device itself, for example an adjacent hot component such as a power amplifier. The range for the temperature a mobile device can be used or stored in can range from as high as 100 degrees centigrade on the dashboard of a car in the hot sun down to minus 20 degrees on a cold winter day here in Finland. Limits for the ambient temperatures in which microphones can be stored and used are typically given in their data sheets. The limits can be, for example, from minus 40 to plus 100 degrees centigrade for storage and from minus 40 to plus 85 for use. Microphones are exposed to more extreme heat during reflow and reworking. The standard maximum temperature in reflow is 260 degrees and a microphone may go through it several times during the manufacturing processes of the microphone and the device the microphone goes into. In a poorly controlled reworking process, a microphone may be heated even significantly hotter than in reflow. Some parts of the microphone package may be affected negatively by temperatures significantly higher than the standard temperatures the microphone has been designed to handle. For example, circuit boards may not be able to withstand very high temperatures. If the microphone package is assembled using solder as the bond between different parts of the package, for example, between the lid and the substrate board, it would be beneficial to use solder pastes with higher melting temperatures than regular solder. However, high temperature solder can no longer be used due to environmental reasons. Therefore, in reflow, the electrical and mechanical solder joints inside the microphone typically melt. This causes a risk to the integrity of the solder joints and the package of the microphone. Semiconductor materials are typically fairly immune, but temperature changes, especially together with high humidity, can still affect the microphone. The humidity levels of the environments that devices and microphones have to operate in can vary a lot. Prolonged exposure to temperature and humidity variations can potentially affect all parts of the microphone, the MEMS sensor, the ASIC, as well as the package and the electrical connections in the microphone. Also macromechanical structures can be affected. For example, the substrate board of the microphone, as well as the rest of the package, especially if it's made out of circuit board material. Humidity can also cause corrosion and oxidation in exposed metal surfaces. Any manufacturing imperfections in the semiconductor chips make them more vulnerable to environmental conditions. Moist air plus a cold device can easily lead to condensation. This can happen, for example, when a device is taken from an air-conditioned building to outdoors where the air is warm and humid. Condensation inside the microphone package can cause electrical problems such as leak currents and shorts, as well as other short or long-term problems to the mechanical structures of the microphone. Condensed water can also affect the operation and performance of the moving MEMS sensor. When a microphone is exposed to humid ambient air, some of the moisture in the air can accumulate into some of the materials in the microphone. For example, semiconductors can gather moisture. Then, when exposed to rapid temperature gradients, like the ones in reflow and reworking, the moisture gathered in the materials heats up and may cause the materials to disintegrate. 
Therefore, microphones should not be exposed to ambient air for a long period of time before reflow. A component's risk of being damaged like this is specified with the parameter Moisture Sensitivity Level, MSL. Another hazard that MEMS microphones face is contamination. Micromechanical sensors with open structures, such as microphones, are vulnerable to external substances that are not designed to be parts of the structure. Some designs may be less vulnerable than others, but if you contaminate the structure enough, sooner or later there will be problems. This isn't something that concerns only MEMS microphones. The same applies also to macromechanical microphones, even though they are likely to withstand bigger amounts of contamination before significant effects can be seen in their performance or reliability. MEMS microphones differ from most other semiconductor-based components in devices because of the sound channels that connect the microphones to the world outside. The sound channel provides contamination, a path into the delicate micromechanical structures in the microphone. The contamination can be solid, meaning for example dust and other particles, or liquid. Particles that threaten MEMS microphone sensors can be divided into two groups, based on their origins. Those that originate in the microphone itself, and those that come to the microphone from the outside. The particles that originate in the microphone are either contamination that got there before or during microphone production, or particles that come loose from some material inside the microphone, for example, during a mechanical shock the microphone is subjected to. There's a wide variety of solid contamination particles that originate outside of the microphone. Dust flying around in the air, sand on a beach, pocket lint, and so on. The liquid that contaminates a microphone can, naturally, be anything from a spilled coffee, to rain, to condensation, to the water in a lake into which the device is immersed, either accidentally or on purpose. Another source can be wet washing of a circuit board in device production if the people in charge don't know that this cleaning method should not be used with MEMS microphones. Contamination can do several kinds of harm to a MEMS microphone. Particles can cause mechanical and electrical problems if they end up in wrong places in a microphone. Particles that end up partially or completely between the membrane and the backplate can impact the movement of the membrane and thereby affect the sensitivity and frequency response of the sensor significantly. Sound sensors that don't need backplates, such as some piezoelectric microphone designs, may be less susceptible to contamination than capacitive sensors. In the case of microphone sensors in which the moving part is suspended in the surrounding bulk material with springs, the springs are potentially vulnerable structures. In capacitive microphones, the springs are typically leaf-type planar springs and, in order to prevent lower frequencies from passing through, all gaps through the spring structures are minimized by design. This means that even very small foreign particles lodged between the springs can affect how they move, possibly affecting the characteristics of the moving sensor element significantly. What comes to contamination, any gaps between structures in the sensor design are potential weak points to look out for. The risk is especially high if the structures are meant to move in relation to each other. Particles can also cause electrical problems in a microphone. They can end up in a place within the sensor where they touch two or more spots that are connected to different parts of the electrical system in the microphone. A particle, especially if it's moist and thereby conductive, can cause a leak between the two parts it connects. In other words, the particle changes the electrical impedance between the two electrical parts. This can lead to more or less severe problems, such as noise or other disturbances. In the worst case, contamination can cause an immediate failure of the microphone. Either the component stops working completely, or it experiences problems that make it unusable. The problems can be, for example, significantly reduced sensitivity, changes in frequency response, noise, or loud disturbances. Contamination can also deteriorate the reliability of the sound sensor. Particles can infiltrate the extremely small micromechanical structures and wedge between structures 
that are supposed to move in relation to each other. This can cause stresses and other short- and long-term problems in the sensor. Notable is that contamination particles in the sensor structures can move around when the microphone shakes, when the device is handled or dropped. This can cause a previously harmless piece of contamination to find its way to a new place where it can start causing problems. Liquids cause at least three kinds of problems. An acoustical problem occurs if the liquid blocks the sound channel partially or completely. It should be noted that it may take liquid a surprisingly long time to evaporate from a confined space such as the sound channel or the microphone package. If the liquid ends up on the MEMS sensor element and somehow prevents or changes its movement, the problem is mechanical. Liquid, or a residue of a liquid, can stick to the moving sensor element and change its mass, compliance and other properties, thereby changing its acoustic characteristics. Liquid can also cause electrical problems if it ends up on the electrical parts of the MEMS system and causes an electrical leak or a short or other electrical changes. The problems caused by liquids can linger even if the liquid evaporates, if it leaves a residue. Contamination can also affect the microphone even if it doesn't actually reach the microphone. For example, lint can accumulate into the microphone sound channel and change the acoustic behavior of the system. Like I said a minute ago, also liquid can enter the sound channel and block it until it later evaporates. A protective membrane or mesh in the device sound channel may only move the problem away from the microphone, but not prevent it completely. Solid or liquid contamination can accumulate on the mesh or membrane and cause problems even if the microphone itself is safe. In the case of a partially or completely blocked sound channel, it doesn't matter how robust against contamination the microphone itself is, because the problem lies elsewhere. Another type of hazard that MEMS microphones face is mechanical abuse. After device assembly, a microphone must endure mechanical impacts inflicted on the microphone by adjacent mechanical features in the device, mechanical pressure, bending, twisting, and so on. Early in the lifetime of the microphone, before and during device assembly, microphones face hazards such as touching or poking during the production of either the microphone itself or the device the microphone is assembled into. In the production phase, some of the abuse may be such that the microphone cannot be expected to tolerate it, but it should withstand reasonable mechanical handling as well as the reasonable abuse it may face. Of course, the meaning of reasonable can vary from one case to another. The package must stay intact during mechanical handling, for example, when it's moved by a pick-and-place machine, or if it's manually handled with, for example, tweezers. The package must also withstand standard reflow and reworking procedures. It must also endure being touched or slightly bumped during the assembly of the device. However, it should be noted that to minimize risks, Physical contact with the microphone should be minimized during production. A microphone must also endure the abuse it faces as a part of the device while the device is being used. Use and handling of the device the microphone is in may cause the circuit board the microphone is soldered on to deform. It may bend or twist. In some cases, tensions and deformations can be caused just by the assembly of the different pieces of the device together. Deformations are a significant risk because MEMS sensors are designed to sense extremely small mechanical changes, so any deformation of the sensor chip may affect the performance, accuracy and characteristics of the sensor. Also, stresses on the solder joints of the MEMS chip or the ASIC caused by deformations or mechanical contact may reduce their short- and long-term reliabilities. As long as the deformations of the circuit board and the microphone are reasonable, the microphone should continue operating normally during the deformation and not experience any short- or long-term changes in its performance, behavior or reliability. There are also more dramatic events, such as the case when the device is dropped onto the floor, 
that can subject the microphones to abuse. First, there's the acceleration caused by the sudden stopping of the device and its contents when it hits the ground. Second, there may be a series of secondary acceleration events caused by the oscillation of the device structures as the device returns to its original shape after the violent deformation caused by the impact. Third, the deformations can cause other components or mechanical parts in the device to come into contact with the microphone, causing damage either to the component itself or its solder joints. Fourth, if the device happens to hit the ground so that it lands on the mouth of the microphone sound channel, some of the air between the ground and the device is squeezed into the sound channel and onto the microphone sensor. This pressure pulse can be violent enough to damage the sensor. A violent mechanical impact can also trigger latent existing problems in the microphone to become actual problems. Like I mentioned earlier when I talked about contamination, a mechanical impact can also cause particles inside the microphone package to shift and end up in places, for example on the moving parts of the MEMS sensor, where they start causing problems. Therefore, impact testing is sometimes included when the contamination immunities of MEMS microphones are tested. Another thing a microphone should endure is mechanical pressure applied on it by the surrounding device mechanics. Top port microphones are typically sealed on top of the microphone with a sealing gasket. Depending on the design and compliance of the sealing gasket, it may exert force on the microphone package. The microphone package must withstand these forces without being damaged or deformed, as long as the forces are reasonable. Also in this case, the definition of reasonable depends on the available microphone technologies as well as the requirements set by the application and the device the microphone is used in. The ability of a microphone to endure device deformations and impacts depends a lot on the way the microphone has been mechanically implemented into the device. Of course, the nature of the abuse the device is subjected to plays a big role too. Pressure shocks are another type of hazard that MEMS microphones face. They can be caused by mechanical, acoustical and electrical events. The first type of event is the one I explained a minute ago. A dropped phone lands on the mouth of the microphone sound channel, causing a pressure shock to shoot up the sound channel. This is a real risk and some microphone drop test types take this form of risk into account. Another event that can cause a hazardous pressure shock on a microphone is an ESD spark that lands somewhere near the microphone. The discharge heats up the air surrounding it, causing it to expand, and this can cause a very loud sound pressure pulse. This pressure shock can be strong enough to damage the MEMS sensor, especially if the spark hits into the sound channel in the device mechanics, and the channel directs the energy of the shock directly onto the microphone sensor. Another event in which a microphone may be exposed to a pressure shock is when the component is contained in a relatively small closed space or enclosure and a door to the enclosure is closed violently. In principle this could happen in a car when a door is slammed, but normally this is not something that damages a MEMS microphone. However, a pressure event can also cause a MEMS microphone to behave in a weird way temporarily I'll talk more about this when I talk about the use case testing of MEMS microphones. There are also some electrical events and use cases which pose reliability risks for MEMS microphones. For example, an ESD spark can damage a microphone also electrically by, for example, frying delicate semiconductor components in the ASIC. I talked about ESD and how to prevent ESD damage in more detail in episode 21. There are also other phenomena related to the everyday use of the device that could affect the microphones. Violent pressure changes caused by turbulent wind, fast and slow temperature gradients, ambient air pressure gradients, and so on. Usually these phenomena cause only temporary disturbances and the microphone operation and performance return back to normal immediately or soon after the cause for the problems has been removed. The reason for the problem can be, for example, that the MEMS sensor outputs a signal that the ASIC wasn't designed to receive. 
The cure is that the ASIC is redesigned to accept everything the MEMS gives it. The effect these phenomena have on a microphone can be tested with use case related tests. I'll talk more about them in episode 28. Okay, that's it for this episode. In this one I talked about the, the hazards that threaten the well-being of MEMS microphones. In the next episode I'll continue talking about MEMS microphone reliability. That one will be about reliability improvement. Thanks for watching, I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any comments or questions, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you liked what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management, and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 